In this video, I'm going to show how to run the Koa library software uh, on Windows, Mac, or Linux using a virtual machine. So the solution that I've come up with for running Koa allows you to very easily install Koa on a system uh, and move it from system to system without having to actually have uh, Linux installed, which is uh, what Koa is natively built in and the, the most recent releases are available for. Uh, what you see here on the screen is actually the uh, the Koa server running right now and it this server is just a, a demo um, but it's got all of the, the parts and pieces. Uh, this, is, this could be a server that uh, you could download and use and try out um, or uh, you could download it and try it out and then um, you could actually install it from from scratch uh, following some instructions that I have um, and, uh, and and build uh, everything your, yourself. Now in order to start all of this the uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to download VirtualBox which is a, a virtualization software that will allow you to um, to create a, an instance on your computer that can run Koa. Um, <clears throat> now VirtualBox is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so if you just go to virtualbox.org you can download the appropriate distribution. Let me close out these um, <clears throat> different tabs here so you can actually see uh, what the server looks like. So currently the, the library that I was just showing is running in the background and it's running here. This is a, a, a Debian server that is uh, set up. Let me shut this down. Now if you just want to try out Koa, what you can do is uh, go to my guide, which there will be a link to, to the guide in the uh, description here, and uh, install VirtualBox and then you can download uh, one of the two instances that I've created. So I've created one instance that's a Koa instance all ready to go. Uh, everything's installed. I think I put some sample patrons and things in. That was the one we were just looking at. And then I have a second instance that is just at the beginning of the install phase. So for your own library project perhaps the completely ready to go instance uh, will, will work just fine. Uh, if maybe if you just have a home library, you have a very small library, you don't you don't really need uh, any other modifications made. However, if you do want some other uh, modifications made, perhaps uh, this other library um, instance is the one that you need. It will uh, take you right to the beginning of the install process after everything's been set up, and you'll be able to go through and and make some different selections. Once you have uh, installed VirtualBox and downloaded the instance you'll need to go to file and then import appliance and so you'll have to import uh, the particular instance that you downloaded and then once it's down it's uh, imported you can just click start alright so this is a, a Debian server and if you're just using this software um, to, to uh, catalog a small library or something you probably won't need to do much with this server other than just let it run in the background uh, right now it's just booting up and you can see right here there's a little prompt uh, and I could if I wanted log into the Debian server and update this server or update the Koa software but for most of the purposes um, you can just leave it alone you, you don't need to do anything with it uh, if I want to now uh, once the server is running it should have uh, started up the, the Koa instance so if I open up a web browser and I go to 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 that's going to be the the user uh, interface so this is if um, what your patrons would see or I can go to 8081 so port 8081 and that will be the administration side and so this is where uh, right now I only have the one admin user but uh, you can go in here and this is how you can add books you can add patrons uh, you can you know do anything that you need to in um, uh, the Koa library software 
Now if you do end up uh, using this, I would recommend that uh, you, at minimum you change the passwords on, <laughs> on your library here, since everything that I have is just uh, publicly available. Um, you might also want to investigate, um, if you're not going to build something from scratch, you might also want to investigate going in and actually um, <clears throat> Uh, building or uh, changing the password on the on the Debian server as well. Um, now the the user guide which you can access on my website uh, joshhurdle.com uh, gives all of this information so I will pull it up here it's also linked in the description and this again will show you how you can very easily uh, grab these two images the links to actually download them are here in the document uh, it also has instructions for installing from scratch. So if you want to to build this from the ground up, uh, there are some instructions here that you can follow. If you find this software to be useful and you'd like uh, to ask a question, um, please feel free to contact me. My, my contact information, you can tweet me H-E-R-T-E-L-J-T uh, -E or you can send me an email. My contact information is sitting here in the guide. And I hope that you, uh, hope that you enjoy.